Hello, I am here with Monique Zinn, owner, CEO of Zinn Insurance Agency. Hi, Monique. It's so nice to have you here. Hi, Julie. How are you? Nice to see you again. I'm doing great. Monique, you recently graduated from the Resilient Transformation Academy and had some pretty amazing results in this academy. And so first of all, I would like to say congratulations on your graduation. Thank and you. Yeah, so we'd just love to hear a little bit about your journey of why you started, what were the challenges that you were facing before rolling into the Resilient Transformation Academy, and if you could just share with maybe those that are listening, what were you feeling, what were you experiencing before you and I started working together? Uh, I think as a owner, CEO, founder, your title of wherever you insert business professionally from a family standpoint, we all wear a lot of hats. And juggling those hats uh, can be difficult. And uh, you, I was trying to create a work-life balance and I was not being effective in any area. I was getting things accomplished, but I was rushing through things. I'm uh, not being fully detail-oriented, trying to, uh, I was always, I have been, always been told that I need, um, I work very quickly and I was, you know, nobody works at my pace yet I was missing details and I, it was becoming a point where I was, I have always been going, 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 and I was extremely ex experiencing burnout. Uh, things, small things were triggering me from, you know, a tone of a voice to a reaction on a customer or a team member or a family member. And I just felt that uh, things, I, I didn't have a good harness and I didn't have um, a better control or tools to help me correct things that I needed to correct um, internally and externally. How did that affect your health? Like, did it affect you not being able to sleep at night? Oh, Julie, uh, I, 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 it would not, it affected my sleep. I, I, I'm a person that wakes up early and I was waking up earlier. I was waking up multiple times during the night because I could not quiet my mind. Uh, I was starting to, you know, you, the TV, the noisemakers, the, uh, the dark lights, the, I was starting to like, I can't, the melatonin wasn't working. My, my physician was like, let's start giving you sleeping pills so that you can sleep. And I started to take them because I needed to have sleep because of, I have extremely long days and I didn't like that. I didn't want to be, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got nervous about being hooked on sleeping pills because I couldn't sleep. And then exercising wasn't enough. I tried to take good care of how I eat and my exercise, because that helps to alleviate stress. Things were not working and I felt extreme burnout. I wasn't able to go throughout the day. I felt I wasn't able to sustain my energy and I just wasn't being effective. And I'm like, something has to change and I choose not to get medications. There has to be something out here more that I can work on for myself as well as who I interact with from my team to my family, to customers that we serve. Wow. So you were facing a lot of burnout. It was affecting the way you were sleeping. That was affecting your energy levels. It was, it, was it affecting your focusing and not being able oh, to make yes. focus, not being able to make good decisions. You know, I'm a person that um, makes decisions really quickly, quickly because of the nature of my business. Um, but I wasn't making them effective. I didn't think long enough to make sure that that decision was the right one. Um, uh, you just, uh, my mind was racing. I don't think I was being able to fully be present with others because I was like, okay, decision, decision, next, next. I was already way ahead on the hamster wheel and I felt like I was racing ahead and then having to come back when if I was more in the present, uh, things could be different. I just wasn't effective. I, I was okay, but I am a person that wants to strive for excellence. And I don't feel like I was being excellent to myself or to others. And what have you tried in the past to fix this? Uh, exercise, uh, speaking with doctors, um, you know, look, you know, getting things checked from a medical standpoint. I was also reading books. I was talking to mental health professionals to see if it was something from that regard. Um, I, uh, you know, also, uh, have a business coach and was, um, you know, speaking to him as well too. What do you think I should do? How do things differently? Uh, and it happened to be that I 
actually found this program because I am a member of Vistage. And Julie was uh, a speaker there. Uh, and it was just right about the time I was hitting my tipping point and I was at the uh, epitome or the top of my burnout. And it was like serendipitous that uh, she was a speaker. And I'm like, oh my gosh, tell me more. And most of the time when you start talking about emotions, uh, heart, mind, body, then as, as my friend would say, that's hippy dippy shit. So not everyone's open to that, but Julie came to not only the mental, the emotional, but the science behind it. And it made sense. And I said, okay, I need to harness triggers. I need to be able to have an emotional state of balance. I need to be able to not let things trigger me so I can be an effective leader, a better mom, a, to get better sleep. I just, I, I, I crave something more. It was I'm like, yes, yeah, sign me up. I need to make, I need to make changes in my life. Uh, and so that's where I got started with you. And so what was different about this program based on what you had tried in the past? Uh, there, uh, the, the program, uh, you know, the, the Academy on the weekly sessions, having something to test, you know, to actually not, uh, you know, there were more metrics, I guess you could say, because we're all systems and process related in a lot of areas. There were systems and processes that we can measure, we can get back. Having coaching, where are you off track? I will say at the very beginning, I got into the program and I was hot to trot for like two months and I fell off the wagon. I'm like, okay, I don't have time to do my inner balance. I'm doing, you know, I was starting to fall off the track. And honestly, Julie, uh, you came to me and said, are, do you want to re-engage? How important this is this to you? What does this look like for you? And I just had another aha moment where I'm like, yes, this is extremely critical to me and I need to make this a priority and it's not hard. Everybody is busy, but you make a priority for what is important to you. And so I turn, I reshifted my focus and my energy, what is important. And I can carve out time to make this because this is going to have a greater effect on myself and everyone else who surrounds me. So um, Julie came in and said, I'm going to, uh, you know, let's refocus. I had 11 goals and let's focus it to top three. What is, what could we change in the top three in the next 30 to 60 days? And we stuck to it. And I have felt a re-engagement. I went over through the program all over again uh, and going back into the academy and retaking my notes and going back. I don't know how many times I've gone on week three through week six and going, okay, there's more information here. I'm feeling low or I'm having a moment and I'm like, nope, I can pop in there or have a session or being able to jump into the group. I, you know, having accountability, not only with you, Julie, but as a uh, other members that are also feeling this at different points and their, their stage with the, the performance, as well as their own personal goals or things that are going on with them has been helpful uh, to, we all, have, it's a community and we're also to help each other. Well, when you recommitted, you went on a whole different trajectory because your commitment was like a level 10 out of 10. And some amazing things started to happen for you after you committed. So can Thank you share you. with us what shifted for you in that level of commitment? Um, just, it was important to, um, it was important to myself and my mental well-being. It was important to me to be a better mother and a wife. It was better for me to be a, a better leader. And um, I believe when you want good, positive things, things come to you. When you're scared and you have fear and you have desperation, um, people smell it on you and you don't want that. You want to be able to be a positive light uh, in business. And, uh, you know, when you when you are more open, things come to you when you give more great up to the world. So it just I felt more humbled. I have more peace. I have more clarity. Um, I still go fast, but it is a more controlled pace. Uh, I never said set it on cruise control. It's just I have more control uh, of where I'm going and what I'm doing. And I just, uh, I, I just feel like I can breathe and I sleep better. I sleep better. And I just, I, I'm starting to feel the difference. So that is, that's, that's helpful. Would you say that you have more energy now? I do. And when I don't have, or I'm feeling like I'm having a bad day where I'm like, Ooh, the energy is often and I go, okay, shift and reset. What can I do? What is what's causing this? It's like when uh, Julie, you would say like, I buy a red sports car and you notice all the red sports cars. Well, now there is the awareness of where the sports car is. 
how is it running? Um, you know, what do we need to do? And so to be able to have that awareness to reset, what's the trigger? Usually it's not you, it's that external source and how are you going to react to it? So that, I think that's one of the biggest things because I'm, I'm an Aries. I don't care who you are. Aries are fiery. We're a fire sign. We're, we're fiery and, you know, back and forth. And I think I can just, uh, I've been able to harness that a little bit better and, and uh, continue on. And I, I want to continue to grow this even more so it's, it's exciting to me. It's exciting. Uh, I'm sharing it with my team. I'm sharing this with others, either just minor techniques, like we've learned, like the bunker in technique, the red light, green light language. Okay. What and kind of, what are things that are depleting your energy? It's easy to like tap into the negative stuff kind of first to see what's wrong and then look at the positive. So I'm starting to use that with my team, my children. Um, I just, you know, people are like, you know, you told me about that red light, red light, green light language, and this is fantastic. I had one person in my team the other day who's having a problem with a customer. It's like, I choose to make this fun and easy. We're going to get this over the finish line. We're going to make this happen. And, you know, she said, uh, if I didn't have this before, I would have been like freaking out or and the customer was upset at me. And I turned the whole course of the conversation around. And at the end of the conversation with the customer that she had on the interaction, he was like, well, thanks. This was much easier. And thanks for listening to me. And I, you know, I, I'm sorry to be, uh, I didn't mean to be so rude, but you were very nice about it. So thanks very much. I appreciate all the hard work you were doing. And I was like, win for my team. So it it has a tenfold effect. It's going out into the world in other areas. Wow. And you, you run a team and you're a mom of two younger children. How does this translate into being a better mom or being a better wife or being a better leader? Patience. I see patience. I ask more questions. Uh, I'm just being more engaged in the moment and not thinking about, oh, business, I've got this and I've got these emails and I've got these proposals out and this. So I'm really trying to um, use my time. And when I need to shift to being a mother, I need to shift to being a business owner that even though those things are still going on in my mind, I'm still trying to be present. I'm putting the electronics down more. I'm not in my phone all the time where mommy's on her, on her phone for her emails. It's now where I'm fully being able to be present with them and you have more interaction and um, the, the memories are, are more precious. We're creating good memories and we're having wow. better conversations. The presence is so big because think about how many parents are not there with their children. They may be there physically, but, but you're there, but you're doing this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. And I've been able to put it down and go. So tell me why, why, you know, the fan box was, was, was not very nice today. Tell me why, you know, tell me why, what, what was your best? So I like to, to ask my children, what was the best part of your day? And what was the most difficult part of the day? And you get different questions all the time. So I would have never started asking those questions if I wasn't trying to be more present with others. Wow. Really beautiful. Really beautiful. Thank you Thank for sharing you. that. And sure. I remember we had a conversation just about a week and a half, maybe two weeks after you really doubled down on your commitment mm -hmm. and you shared something with me and we both got a little teary eyed and yeah. it was about a feeling that you had longed for, for a long time. You desired it, you wanted it, but you weren't able to access this feeling of peace. Mm -hmm. And when I you get, share, I get that a little bit, I get a little uh, teary eyed and tingly about it right now, even you're, when you're talking about it. So yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit more about this feeling that you're able to actually sink into? I think when you have, when you breathe and you, you take a moment different times throughout the day, you're able to be more at peace with yourself. And I always said, I'm, I have been a very happy person in my life and I go and I've got good energy and, you know, I'm, I'm not a pessimist. I'm an optimist, but the hamster wheel that I was going on was not sustainable. And going through this program has allowed me to just for the first time in, a, I think ever, I have a true sense of peace uh, I know that sounds very, uh, you know, emotional and touchy feely, but I think when you have inner peace with yourself and you have, you, um, you give yourself latitude, you give yourself grace to be like, I'm not going to get all that done today, but it'll happen tomorrow. 
I'm not the most perfect person in these areas, but I'm working on it. And being able to have that, like, I am going to grow my business. I am going to have that revenue there, you know, from the business standpoint to personally having a sense of peace allows you to just be more grounded, think, act, feel, react better. And I'd never had that before. And I, I was like, wow, doors are starting to open up where I've always been pounding, 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 but my approach is different. And there's an ease that I've never had that before. And I, I just, um, I've never had peace before. And I thought that I did, but I didn't. And now that I have it, there aren't, there aren't words for it. There just isn't words for it. I don't know. I don't know else how to say that, but, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's delightful. And I hope others will accomplish it as well, because when you are amazing and you have peace in your life and you have peace in your heart, just things are very different. Things are different for you and everybody else around you. And Julie, you talk a lot about the force field or the Taurus, is it the Taurus field, the Taurus field. Uh, yes. And so I literally, when I, you know, I'm having my balance sessions in my office or I'm by myself, I'm like, okay, who am I going to be touching today? Who's going to be interacting with me? And who's going to, who, who are we going to be with each other in this moment? So uh, it's, 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 it's delightful and it's loving. So I just, uh, I feel also um, a better sense of, uh, I'm a spiritual person and I, and I have religion in, in, uh, uh, in my life as well too. And I just feel that I'm, I'm more open to things and I can, I can hear things and, and be with uh, myself a little bit better. So it's just, it's, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. So oh, beautiful. So Monique, having this internal sense of peace, we're human beings, life can be really stressful. There's gonna be a time that you're gonna feel stress in the future. Are you able to feel the stress and somehow the peace goes away, but can you get the peace right back? I'm working it? on it. So it sometimes it, it depends on the situation. Sometimes I can, uh, I'm aware and I can, uh, like you would say, it shift and replace and come back more quickly. Other times it's like, okay, hold on. I got to take a moment. I got to take a moment. We got, we got this. How are we going to do this so that we can get back to making those decisions, making people happy and accomplishing what we need to do. So sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Um, but it's not where something would bother me for a day or many days afterwards. And I would keep bringing it up and keep rehashing it. Now it's in the moment I can harness it and let's move on. Uh, so I don't have those lingering things days and days and weeks afterwards or have this animosity on something. I can go, okay, we're good. We let it out, we push it on and we move forward next thing. So that's wow. been extremely helpful, powerful really powerful and it sounds like you have the tools and techniques now to do this anytime anywhere no matter where you are it's a lifetime skill yes so six years from now if you're not feeling peace you've got that the, these tools to shift your internal state to come into peace no matter where you are or who you're with or what's happening in your external environment absolutely i would say that um uh you know sometimes my inner balance i don't always have that with you but the breathing techniques and being able to have that and at first, when I started the program, you were like, well, we, you can do it when, you, when you're in a full room or doing, I'm like, how in the world is she going to, am I going to be able to do that without my little thing on there and breathing and calming down? I'm like, this lady's crazy. Like, like how in the heck am I going to be able to do that? But now that I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, I'm doing it more. And I didn't realize it because we're practicing. So those 10 minute sessions become longer um, you know, ongoing. And then there are a lot of times I don't have my inner balance, but I'm like, I can do this. Like I'm doing it now as we speak. You're frustrating me. I'm breathing. I'm trying to come into coherence because I'm not going to kill you. Okay. It's we got this. inner state of being. And it is. And it, all the time. you've given us tools. And so I was like, oh, now weeks, months later, I'm like, oh, I can do that. I can do what she said. Holy macaroni and cheese. This is amazing. So it's been helpful. I would have to say you're becoming quite masterful at it. Hey, uh, no, I, I'm still an apprentice. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm apprentice, but I'm working on it. So with your tutelage and just getting more of that and reading and, and doing these tools and just making it 5, 10, 15 minutes a day throughout the day, 
does help. It does help tremendously. And so if you make time for what is most important to you in 10 or 15 minutes, you can make it happen. So that's, you, you know. Do you feel that this has saved you time in the long run? Has it increased it has. your productivity? It has, because I'm able to focus better on projects. I can pivot with ease and know that where I stop and start is co accomplished both personally and professionally. I can pivot from business to personal, come back. To, I feel things that my productivity has definitely increased because I'm able to knock out projects more effectively in periods of time, um, giving more clear direction to my team members on what needs to be done and holding things. The accountability is much greater uh, for myself as well as for the rest of my team. So we're really knocking things out uh, you know, in, in that regard. So yes, I would definitely say that because you can just focus. I don't feel so scattered even when I'm in like working on certain projects that I can only accomplish. What percent would you say your productivity has gone up? Uh, probably 50, 60% just because wow. I was able to not rush. I'm still on track, but I can slow down accomplish things really well. And I'm even finding I'm getting more of that project done in that period of time and then moving on to the next thing. So that's, I, I would say that for sure. 50 to 60% increased productivity, sleeping through the night, present with your employees, present with your children, present with your husband. Quite a transformation, Monique. Really yes. beautiful transformation. I, and it, it's it's a work in progress. It's It doesn't happen overnight. And it's just what's important to you. Um, so I would say I, I started, I kind of fell off the wagon. But once I, uh, and I'm like, wow, if we can just continue to engage and, you know, let the process run, it does make a change. It does really, it's what you want. It, you got to want it. You got to want it. You can't just say it, but you got to want it. And if you want it, it's going to happen. And it's going to affect not your, only yourself, but it's going to affect others around you as well, too. That's the key. And as leaders, we know our energy affects other people. Yes. And so to have that peace, and we say it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. It does. Right. That, that's perfect, Julie. Good job. I like that. I'm going to give that to my, my team. Yes. We can't intellectually understand it, but we can experience the state of it and the fact that you can access it on demand and you trained your internal system to be able to go there. What a gift you've given yourself. Thank really you. beautiful. Your level of commitment is a testament to who you are and to what you were choosing in your life. Well, thank and you. so thank it's you. been an absolute pleasure to work with you. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for recommitting. And thank you for sharing your journey with other people. I hope Absolutely. that this as well. I hope it helps others that are experiencing things like myself. I'm sure we all in some capacity because we, um, when we take on an ownership or a leadership position, we take on a lot more. And we also have more accountability to ourselves and to others. And if we can be our best, uh, as one person would say, who am I, uh, you know, when I have to show up, I'm not showing up for myself. Who am I showing up for you who is surrounding me today? And that's one of the things, if we can show up at our best for others, we're going to get so much better out of everybody else. And so I, I oh hope this will yeah. help, help others yeah. as it did for me. And if you were to sum it up in one or two sentences, if you were sharing this with a friend, how would you sum it up? Uh, that. The heart and the mind and the body uh, do have flow. And we, if we have awareness and we can harness our emotions and be aware of our triggers, we can shift and reset and we can be better people for ourselves as human beings and for others that we touch. So beautiful. So empowering, right? You're not, you're not dependent on anything outside of you. You're doing it all in here. Yep. So beautiful and people journey. will notice the change they'll notice <laughs> and they'll say did you do your haircut did you do something different like, no my energy is different <laughs> that's just, right it's, and it's the energy is and it is a difference it's a huge difference when your energy well thank you so much for sharing your journey it's thank you julie i appreciate it i i i've enjoyed the journey so thank you you're welcome okay bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.